Hello, I'm JW. This time I've uh, got a bit of cable to have a look at, and uh, it's actually a bit of flex, uh, three core stuff here. Now, this came from an outside light. It's one of those jobs that you sort of just spike into the ground and have the flex going off to some junction box. Obviously, you can then move it about and direct it at whatever things you want. And this has been outside for a number of years, and the reason we had to go there was because the uh, entire circuit was testing as faulty. And uh, it turned out that the cable itself was at least one of the faults. There was a number of other faults elsewhere with uh, junction boxes underground being full of water and so on. But uh, this cable turns out to be one of the faults. So let's just have a uh, quick test of this and see what kind of results we're getting. So this is the bit of flex we've got. Uh, these particular lights were, say, the spike variety. Had about a metre or so of flex attached to them. And uh, the uh, ends of it, uh, which I've obviously uh, cut off here, went into some junction boxes which uh, unfortunately being buried partly in the flower beds were mostly full of water and uh, there's faults and problems there but uh, it turned out that this cable itself or this flex uh, is also somewhat faulty. Now let's just have a closer look at the labelling on this and what we've got here is uh, the type here which is H05 RNF, fairly common rubber kind of uh, flex there. 3 core, 0.75mm squared, and it's made by someone called Ningbo Hushun, Electronics Company Limited. And uh, visibly on the outside, I mean, it looks perfectly fine. So, this has been outside for a number of years in the flower beds there, but uh, it's not like someone sort of slashed through it with a lawnmower or anything. And as you can see, the whole length uh, again looks perfectly fine. Just got a repeat of the wording there. Maybe some light scuffing on the uh, outer covering, but other than that, you wouldn't suspect uh, anything wrong with it particularly. So it looks uh, perfectly fine. Now I'll just do a little test here with the uh, Mega here, and uh, we're going to use insulation resistance. So we'll turn it around to the uh, 500 volt position. That's generally what you use on a 230 volt circuit. Now we've got the ends here from uh, of testing previously. So we've got the two uh, line and neutral basically twisted together there, and then the CPC or the earth there separate, and that's pretty much how you would test it uh, with a load attached to the end. So we'll just connect up to these. Although, and of course, there is no load now because I've cut it off, so we've just literally got the three wires entirely separated. Now, when this was outside, it would have been raining and it was fairly wet. And of course, if you get the uh, moisture on the wires here and at the end, then of course that can cause fairly undesirable readings. But this has been drying out basically inside for a couple of weeks since then, and there's no sign of any moisture here whatsoever. So you should expect this to test pretty much perfectly, but uh, anyway, let's see uh, what we get. So you see it's at about 74, and it's actually falling as we continuously apply the 540 odd volts there. So it's now down to about 43, and while this is theoretically a pass, this is not the kind of behaviour you'd expect from a decent cable. And you see it's still falling away there down to uh, 37 and still dropping. So we'll just uh, turn out that test there. Now normally on a length of cable or flex, certainly the short, you would expect this to be off the scale immediately, sort of greater than 500 or 999 or whatever the particular meter goes up to. But as we saw there, 36 uh, megaohms is definitely not right. Although, say in theory, that uh, is actually a pass, the minimum being one, but certainly a cause for concern there. So. Why not try it on the 1000 volt range and see if it's any different? Now, just a warning there because obviously the uh, rather large voltage. And as you can see, it starts off at about that 70 point again and rapidly plummets down. So we're now down to around 14, 13 mega ohms and still falling. And this really is not what you'd want from a uh, decent cable. So as you see there again, it's now down to around 10, and if we'd have kept it on, it may well have fallen uh, lower than that. And uh, just to show that uh, it's not actually just some part of the cable, we'll go back to the 500 volt one. It's just two between the, say, the neutral one and the uh, CVC there. And again, this is the 500 volts. So again, you see it's dropping away there. So 50, 49, and so on. And if we do between these two, yep, pretty much the same, although that's actually even worse because that's down to around 30. And completely, it's just to the uh, Two there without the other one there. And as you see, that's getting around that sort of 40, and it's still falling away 38, 37, 
and so on. So pretty much the same result regardless of which of the conductors we're using. Now I'll just show you what happens with some decent cable. This is a uh, two core flex, so that's actually one millimeter square, but there's probably about sort of 40 meters or so left on this uh, 50 meter roll. So uh, I'll just uh, prepare the two ends here and just connect it on. And so this is brand new, never used, so as you would expect it to be pretty decent. 500 volts again, so let's see what we get this time. Now see what we're getting is pretty much the opposite of what we had before. It started out at low value, but it's actually increasing. And this is due to capacitance in the cable, because essentially you've got two uh, conductors in parallel over a very long distance, and obviously you've got the insulation between them. So what we're doing here is basically charging up a capacitor. As you can see, though, the value is now in the 450 mega ohms range, so of course no problem there whatsoever, and that's pretty much uh, what you would expect. And that gradually increases because initially a capacitor that's not charged will allow a certain amount of charge to form on the two plates, or the two conductors in this case. But of course as that charge builds up, then less and less charge can be put in there, and of course the effective resistance there increases until so it's basically in the uh, many hundreds of uh, mega ohms there and uh, if we just do that again you'll see that rising effect so starts out around that fairly low value but very quickly rises into the many hundreds of mega ohms there so that's kind of what you'd expect with normal wire but uh, this uh, faulty stuff here is doing the opposite it's starting out not terrible and then it's actually uh, decreasing and eventually it will get down to the level where it will cause a fault now in terms of what's gone wrong with this, it's most likely that the insulation material is either defective in some way, or uh, more likely it's got some problem whereby being outside for a long time, moisture has migrated into the insulation material, either through the outer covering or via the ends or wherever else, and therefore it's reducing the effective resistance of the insulation. And of course that's not something that should be happening, particularly with rubber flex there, and it's uh, obviously attached to these outside lights by the manufacturer, because of course it's designed to be uh, waterproof there. But uh, if we cut into the uh, flex here, and so this is only about half of the length that's on the light fitting, if you actually pull it out inside, it pulls off relatively easily, as you'd expect. But there's not uh, it's not like the insides are sort of wet or soaking with water or anything, they look and feel perfectly dry. So of course what's happened presumably over a period of time is that say water or moisture has migrated in here and is essentially reducing the uh, quality of the insulation because uh, I say it looks perfectly fine, there's no major sort of damage or breakages or whatever in there. And again the outer black uh, sheath here, again there's no uh, cuts, damages, lawnmower slices or pretty much uh, anything else going on there. So. This can only be down to substandard flex, which say may have been uh, fairly poor when it was originally installed. I didn't actually install these originally, and that was many years ago that they were put in, so no uh, test results available from the original install. But certainly now it's uh, down to a very poor level. So uh, let's just twist these together, and then we'll test it without the black covering on and see if that makes any kind of difference. So I just twisted the uh, wires together there, so they're all basically in contact along most of the length. This end, of course, uh, completely open. And then this end, we'll just do what we did before. So we'll go between the blue and the brown there, and of course over to the green and yellow here. Now on a piece this short, you should expect this to basically show completely open, sort of uh, highest reading possible, but uh, nevertheless we'll see what we've got. So. Uh, Use the 500 volts again, that's the standard voltage you'd use for this stuff. So let's see what we get. Well again, we've got a fairly high reading in the sort of 300 plus, but as you can see, it's still falling. So uh, clearly this insulation on these wires is the actual cause of the problem here. And so though it's a lot higher, it is still falling away there, which is definitely not what you'd expect, certainly on a piece of this length. Let's try the uh, 1000 volt test anyway, so uh, might as well. You know, that warning there, because I'll see uh, putting 1000 volts in your fingers, not desirable. And yeah, it's the same pattern again, although it's more severe this time. Starts out in the 100 plus, and there it is falling away already below 60 mega ohms. 
and if we keep the voltage on for a long time, as you can see, it's still falling away at uh, quite a rate. So yeah, definitely the uh, insulation in this cable. Say so it looks perfectly fine, but uh, pretty obviously, it definitely is not. So uh, there we go. And say so this is uh, not too clear. Well, it's some kind of rubbery material. If you sort of scratch it there, it does sort of go to a lighter shade. So it is a rubber or some kind of rubbery material. But obviously either, say, water's got into this and uh, caused the insulation to be degraded or it was degraded in the first place. And so this has had adequate time to dry out. Now one last thing we could do is just to test the insulation itself. This is the black outer covering, which you should expect to be totally open, but let's shove it in the jaws here, put a moderately uh, short piece between that. Bearing in mind this is just supposed to be black uh, rubber material that shouldn't have any conductivity at all. We'll use a thousand volt job to see what gives. Yep, and as expected, greater than 999 mega ohms, so nothing there. So it's definitely whatever's on the uh, coloured insulation here. Now just as a small aside here, this mat on the bench here is one of these static dissipative varieties, and on the back of it, so it's got that black coating there, which uh, means you can put electronic equipment on here without any danger of static building up and causing damage to sensitive components. But the question is, is this surface conductive in any way? And would it therefore affect uh, readings like that? Certainly we had that uh, 3000 plus volt test on those connectors a while ago. Then uh, had it laying directly on here. So I've got the two uh, pointy probes there. So we'll just place those on here, sort of moderate distance uh, apart there. And then we'll see what kind of results we get. So this is the 500 volt uh, test there. And there you go, greater than 9.99. So no, this does not affect the uh, readings there. Let's try the 1,000 just because we can. Yep, same again, 9.99. So uh, although this is static dissipative, it's not conductive in any way. And that's all there, 1,000 volts applied. It doesn't actually show any reading. So uh, again, pretty much what you would expect there. The back of it, with the black coating, let's show you what we have there. Put that on the lower range there, the 500, and that does show as conductive, so 0.07 there. It's only putting about 90 volts uh, into that. So, yes, the back black coating is partially conductive, but of course, that's only the back, it's not the uh, front there. Let's put that on the continuity one again, it shows greater than uh, 99k ohms. So, uh, partially conductive on the back, but the green front here not conductive at all, unless of course you manage to ram the uh, probes right through and pierce into the back, in which case of course it would be, but obviously just something being placed on here, that's not a problem. So faulty flex there, and uh, faulty over quite a short length here, and the particular installation had a whole set of these lights, all of which had about a metre of this flex on, and uh, oddly some of them were like this, showing uh, very poor readings, and the others were perfectly fine and uh, no problem there whatsoever. So presumably two different batches of the flex or put it at different times or something like that. And I say visually you wouldn't have thought there'd be any problem with this, but clearly testing it showed up that uh, was really a load of old rubbish. And that particular installation, uh, the end result was that uh, the faulty lights had new uh, flex attached and the rest of the cabling was actually replaced as well with the junction box and things because the original ones had basically filled it with water and were not in a uh, repairable state. So and it's easier to replace what was there. So uh, that was the end of that installation and all fixed up and working and it's also the end of this video. So until next time, thanks for watching.